Requirements for the storage, handling, use, and dispensing of hazardous materials represents the largest body of regulations in the IFC. Hazardous materials can be a challenge because their proper classification is essential in determining and applying the IFC and IBC requirements. In some cases, determining the proper classification itself can be a significant challenge that requires technical assistance from a variety of qualified and competent sources. Not all chemicals and chemical compounds are hazardous materials as defined by the IFC. Chemicals and chemical formulations that do not fall into one of the 12 IFC hazard categories are exempt from regulation under the IFC and IBC. Currently, the American Chemistry Society has over 88 million chemicals or formulations registered in the Chemical Abstract Service. The IFC regulates only about 5% of these chemicals. However, the chemicals that are regulated are essential in the manufacturing of numerous consumer and industrial products. The requirements in IFC Chapter 50 are used in conjunction with the specific regulations for each class of hazardous materials regulated. For example, consider a building that is storing 300 gallons of an oxidizing liquid. Proper code application would require the enforcement of the requirements in IFC Chapters 50 and 63, Chapter 50 for the general hazardous material provisions, and Chapter 63 for the oxidizing liquid provisions. Chapter 50 contains definitions and general requirements in Sections 5002 and 5003 that are applicable regardless of the quantity of hazardous materials in storage or use. Section 5004 contains requirements that are applicable when the amount of storage exceeds a certain quantity threshold, known as a Maximum Allowable Quantity Per Control Area, or MAQ. Section 5005 specifies requirements that are applicable when the hazardous materials are being used or dispensed, and sets forth specific provisions when the amount of hazardous materials in use exceeds the MAQ. Chapter 63 contains requirements that apply below the MAQ and limit the use of oxidizers in certain occupancies. This material-specific chapter also contains requirements that apply above the MAQ and exceed the requirements in Chapter 50. Chapter 50 of the IFC sets forth the minimum requirements for the storage, use, handling, and dispensing of hazardous materials. The terms storage, use, handling, and dispensing are defined in the fire code, and understanding them is important to the proper application of the code. These terms describe the situations in which hazardous materials occur, and they affect the MAQ. Each class of hazardous material is assigned an MAQ based on its hazards and the relative risk of the material to the building and its occupants. For example, materials in storage exist in their original, unopened containers, such as those one might find in the paint section of a hardware store. Since the packaging has not been opened and the contents have not mixed with the atmosphere, the code allows a greater quantity to occur within a specific area than if the same product were in use or dispensing, where the material could be spilled, spread, or otherwise exposed to an environment where it creates a hazard. Remember that as long as hazardous materials remain in their containers, generally they are easier to control. The requirements in Chapter 50 apply to new, that is, virgin or unused, and waste chemicals including their transportation on the site where they are stored, used, handled, or dispensed. Certain processes are exempt from the Chapter 50 requirements. Exemption from these requirements does not relieve the permit applicant from compliance with other IFC provisions and the other adopted codes in the jurisdiction. Exemption also does not relieve the permit applicant from the IFC hazardous materials classification requirements. Off-site transportation is regulated by the U.S. Department of Transportation and is exempt from IFC regulations. The IFC exemptions address specific processes or activities that store or use hazardous materials. 
Some of the exemptions concern activities that are regulated by other ICC code provisions and other exempt activities regulated and preempted by federal law. For example, mechanical refrigeration systems, which can use refrigerants that are flammable or corrosive, such as anhydrous ammonia, are exempt from the Chapter 50 requirements, but are regulated by the requirements in Section 606 and the International Mechanical Code. Stationary storage battery systems, using corrosive materials suspended in an aqueous gel, are regulated by the requirements in Section 608. These specific provisions offer greater safety when compared to the general and material-specific requirements in Chapters 50 through 67. 